So yet again, it has been way too long since my last Stardew Valley build in The Sims 4. So I'm going to try to make up for it by sharing a big lot today. In this stop motion build, we'll be recreating the Stardew Adventurers Guild, Quarry and Mines in Brindleton Bay. All these areas are functional, so you can bring your sims here and actually explore the different levels in the mines and dig up rocks and collectibles too. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. For this build series, I'm using Brindleton Bay as our pelican town since they have similar small coastal town vibes. The spot we're building on today is the 40x40 40 40 Chateau Frisay lock in the Cavalier Cove neighborhood. I'm working through creating an entire Sims 4 save file that has all the places and characters from Stardew Valley in it. I shared quite a few of these builds already, so I'll put a link to the playlist here in case you missed any of the previous locks. First, let's work on the Adventurer's Guild. I turned this into a haunted house, so it'd be a bit of a challenge to play here and to give you the best approximation to monster spawning that I think we have in The Sims 4. The downstairs I made into the main guild building, and then the upstairs I made into Marlin and Gil's apartment. I wanted access to their apartment to be a bit secretive, so I put a bookcase door in the entry with a ladder behind it, so you have to go through the hidden door in order to get to it. Kept everything quite rustic looking and used lots of greens, reds, golds, and browns throughout this build, so a similar color scheme to the guild in Stardew. I also added a couple cross stitching baskets for Gil because he just seemed like he'd really enjoy stitching by the fire in his rocking chair downstairs or up here in his comfy chair in the evenings. There's also a little kitchen and dining area up here as well as a bathroom. They only have a bedroom in Stardew, but they definitely needed a full apartment in The Sims, so I added all this for playability, and I think the look of it suits their style in my mind. At the back is their bedroom. Again, I kept it quite rustic and simple. I don't think either of these men would be much into interior decorating. I gave them their bunk beds like they have in Stardew, but swapped the color so that the bed is green and the rug is red. It's small and simple, but I think they look red at home in here. Moving downstairs, this is the main room you come into off of the entrance. This back wall is Marlin's shop for you to buy all your weapons and gear. I also wanted this downstairs to be a sort of guild hangout area too. So I put in some tables and chairs for members to sit and hang out together in their off time. I can absolutely see Kent and Willie being members and spending time here with Marlin and Gil. I broke this area up into a couple of rooms to help it look a bit more cozy and like an older building. This front room is a mini library. I imagine this is where they have all their different journals from past adventurers and a bunch of field guides and stuff for reference. I also put a coffee station in here too. The room on the side is a lounge area. This is where I put that big fireplace they have as well as a drink station and some seating for people to relax and socialize after a long day of exploring. The back wall is Gil's area. He's got his iconic rocking chair and another cross stitching box. To the left is the monster eradication board and rewards display. I also put in a metal display case, so maybe if you make up your own challenges, you could put in different medals from the military career in here to mark what your sim has accomplished. Not sure if it'll work if this is not your home lot, but it sounded like a good idea to me. The room at the back is a sort of tactical planning room. This is where they can meet around their round table to plan out excursions or deliberate about guild business or whatever. Again, not something they have in Stardew, but it seemed like an important room to add in. Outside on the left here, I dug out the mountain lake and built a bridge over it. Thankfully, the Junimos have already fixed this one, so you can get over to the quarry right away. I put in a cave on the left to be the quarry mine. You can't actually go in there, but it looks the part. You can, however, mine up some of the stones that are scattered around the quarry, so that part is functional. At the back of the lot are the mines. I put in some vines around the entrance that look nice, but the wisteria at the top blocks your sims from using it, so just delete that item and then your sims can walk through. The other vines don't get in the way, so you'll only have to remove the one that's called wisteria specimen horizontal C that's at the top of the archway. Inside the entrance, there's all the basics, mine car, elevator, and ladder to the lower level. I even put in a crate by the elevator because it is always a good idea to put a chest there in Stardew to drop off your items as you're mining. 
The room on the right is the dwarf's area where you will go broke buying all the bombs you can afford. So definitely an essential area to include here. Moving down to the first mine floor, we have our bug level. I shaped this one like one of those long levels that have the minecart tracks running through the whole length of the level that always have the ladder at the end. There are plenty of collectibles to dig up throughout this area, and there are different things that you can collect on each different level. If you want to amp up the difficulty of this lot, besides having it just be a haunted house, you could also add in the creepy crawlies lot challenge to tie into the bug levels of the mine. The next floor down is our level 60 of the mines. I put in a pool down here to act as our ice fishing spot. I tried adding a fishing sign, but you can't fish in here. Though you could have your sims come take an icy plunge in the pool. I bet Marlin comes down here to do just that for in some sort of a training regimen because he says it helps him keep his edge or something. The version of this lot I uploaded to the gallery has a second elevator down here, but when I went to get shots in live mode, it made me delete one of the elevators. So I replaced it with one of those base game double doors and put an exit sign above it because those look the most similar to me. So just replace the elevator down here with a door and it'll be all set to play in. Going down further, we have our star-shaped lava level. Of course, I had to add in some lava lamps down here to add to that ambiance. I also put in some of those glowing collection things that come and get to work. So your sims can grab some special collectibles down here that aren't in the upper levels of the mines. We can only build down four levels, so this last one I made it to our floor 120 of the mines. On either end, I put a pedestal with one of those mother plant tentacles from Strangerville to be our stand-ins for those snake statues that are at the bottom of the mines. I also put a decorative chest down here because it looked the best to me. It doesn't hold anything, but you could easily swap it out for one of those functional trunks from University or the cardboard boxes from Eagle Lifestyle. Then you could actually put some prizes down here for your sims. And that's everything. So let's take a look at the floor plan and then we'll jump into the cinematics to see what adventures Marlin, Gil, and the farmer get up to here. I love how the Adventurer's Guild, Quarry, and Mines all turned out. Even though it's not as treacherous as the mines in Stardew Valley, it's all functional for gathering plenty of collectibles. I think you could definitely come up with some fun challenges for your sims to do if you have them stay here for a bit. I'd love to hear your gameplay ideas, so definitely share them with me in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button. It really helps out. I have plenty more builds coming, so if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Remember, be kind to yourself today, and I'll see you next time.